Good morning. I am in the process of peeling my tomatoes. I had two gallon size um, freezer bags full of tomatoes that I had gotten out of the garden this summer. And I either didn't have time to process at that point or I had enough other stuff. Probably I didn't have enough time. So I threw them in the freezer and we're on water break right now. So it gives me time to be able to can the rest of this up so I'm not taking up freezer space. Sometimes I'll do this in the um, summer if I've brought in a bunch of tomatoes but not enough to do a huge batch of spaghetti sauce or salsa or anything like that. So it makes it super easy to peel. Um, so if they're frozen, you just pull them out of the bag under warm running water. You put your tomato and I just, this one has a split because they wanted to split towards the end of the last season. And it just peels right off. I keep a bowl to put the peelings in. And then when I'm finished, um, peeling them all, I put the peelings in a dehydrator and I dehydrate them and then I pulverize them in my little like neutral blender and it creates like a tomato powder and I put those in soups and chilies and stuff like that where I want an extra boost of tomato flavor. So it's super easy. I would assume it's very nutrient dense considering a lot of the nutrients are in the peeling. So I'm going to peel the rest of these tomatoes and then they need to sit in the bowl for a little while because they are frozen solid. And then once they have thawed out, I will put them in a food processor and then drain off the excess juices and so I'll be canning tomato juice as well, which you can use to make tomato soup, as I've learned this past winter. And um, I will come back at that point and show you the process of just putting them in the food processor, straining them, um, boiling them up, and getting them canned up and ready for Cheryl's pantry. So I'm going to finish peeling this one and then we will be back in a little while when these thaw. Okay, so I'm back. I'm hoping these are mostly thawed out. They're taking a little bit longer than I anticipated. So I'm going to get the softer ones in here first. These little ones I didn't peel because I would have been here forever, I feel like, peeling them. So I'm going to put these in there. I'll wait and save the big ones for a little bit later. Um, so I'm just going to chop these in the processor. And then I'm going to pour them in my strainer here to get out most of the seeds. And then it will separate the juice so I, can, so I can can tomato juice at the same time. So... I'm going to do this in batches. Something was beeping. I don't know what it was. But anyway, so just going to pulse these. much juice to these so I'm not I'm probably just gonna dump them in my pot which I need to get out so I will be right back with that so they're still pretty um, frozen not completely frozen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in my pot and I'm going to just add them and then when they get softer I'm going to take my Pampered Chef masher and just mash them and make crushed tomatoes. So either that or I can just sit and wait and do it tomorrow, but I'm really not wanting to do that. So, and I'm not wanting to make a pulverized mess. 
for a tomato slushy. So this is what I'm going to do. It should be done in a little bit. Um, so yeah, sometimes you just have to punt if you don't want to sit and wait and I really don't want to. So I'm going to start out probably half of these and then I'll add the larger ones later. And once I get these chopped up, I will add the other ones to the pot and just do it a little bit at a time. Let's see if I can show you. So let's have them in here. I'm just going to crush them up as they warm up and cook and thaw more. And then when I get these the way that I want them, I will come back and show you and finish canning. I'm going to get this stuff cleaned up while I'm working on this. So we will be back. So I'm just going to show you again. So I've got all the tomatoes in there. Some of them are still whole, so I'm just mashing them up. And then, um, so I'll have no tomato juice to do this time, and that's fine. Um, I still have plenty of tomato juice. A lot of people don't like to can with the skins on. Um, most of the skins were off. You could strain this if you wanted to. Some people don't like the tomato seeds, and that's fine too. You, again, you can strain this through a colander and get most of that out, or there's a like a food mill that you can use. To do this I just wanted to get these canned um, because tomorrow I'm gonna to be working on sourdough bread and stuff so you just keep mashing you could probably use an immersion blender if you wanted to to me that's just gonna make it too small for me um, so I'm just gonna keep smashing if you have a potato masher that would work too so I'm just going to do that and get it up to a boil. I'm going to go get my water bath canner. Um, again, some people um, say that you shouldn't water bath tomatoes, or if you do, you should add tomato, or not tomato juice, but lemon juice. Um, I've water bathed mine, and I've not had an issue. I don't know if they should be acidic enough. Um, I know that's a concern and why they say you should pressure can sometimes. I think the tomatoes should be acidic enough. I've not had an issue thus far. Again, if you want to be super safe, you can use a pressure canner. I'm not going to. Um, we'll see how much I'm getting. This is just used in chili it's, or um, Vegetable beef soup is normally what I use canned tomatoes for. Um, so I kind of like the rusticness of the skins and seeds being left in. Some people, again, don't like that. Again, your kitchen, you do you. I'm just kind of wanting to get this done today. Normally, canning tomatoes is like an all day endeavor, and that's okay. Um, I've got the time, I've got the days. I'm just trying to get some of these bigger pieces chopped up a little bit finer. Um, but it makes such a difference. And it smells like I just picked them, but it's in the middle of the winter. So, anywho, I will be back when this boils for about 10 minutes and I get them the size that I want and we'll start adding them to jars and get those in my water bath canner which i will set up when i get off of here while this starts to boil so i can get it heated up and ready to go and then we'll get this stuff in the jars and get it processing and then be done with canning for today i went and bought some corned beef this morning and because it's on sale for St. Patrick's Day, so I'm going to can some more corned beef hash, which there is already a video on my YouTube on how to 
pan corned beef hash. And my stepsons absolutely love it. And it's super cheap, making your own and tastes a million times better. They said it's the best corned beef hash they've ever had, which makes me feel really good. So we will be back. Okay, so the tomatoes have done their thing. I'm going to turn it down a little bit, but I'm going to keep it on so it stays hot. And I'm just going to pour the tomatoes in a jar. I'm going to leave an inch head space. I already have my water bath canner heating up. These just take my chili to another level, my um, vegetable beef soup to another level. I just love the freshness. And they say it's fresh in the store, and I'm sure it is to a point. I don't know. It's just not the same. I know what I put in these. I do not add salt. Um, I don't think you need it. Um, I just turned off my lids i've got my lids and some hot water in the back to soften the seal so i just turned those off in case you're wondering um but i just like knowing what goes in my in my food my family's food because what the government allows to go in the food is just crazy to me um i don't trust the fda I don't trust the CDC. I don't trust any of them. And you can hear cinnamon. Somebody must be walking by our house. So that's her protecting the people that are in the house, which is me and Christian right now. So I'm just going to keep going with these. And then I'll be back when it comes time to wipe down the rims and get them in the canner. Okay, so I have filled all my jars. Now I'm just wiping down my rims. And that's important for two reasons. One, you need to clear off all the residue or it won't seal. And two, I can feel to see if the rim is chipped. If it's chipped, it will not seal either. So... Um, and I've run across one or two, not today, but in the past, I've run across one that was chipped, and this one is. So, I can tell. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse off my funnel again. And since this is my jar that didn't fill completely so it's gonna or it was gonna end up going in the fridge I'm gonna take this jar and dump it in until I get the amount that I need now I can wipe this rim off again and the chipped rim is there and so I don't have to worry about it not sealing because it's just gonna go in the refrigerator so I'm taking my lids that have been in um, warm water again a lot of people say that you don't need to do this anymore i'm so used to doing it and i'm going to be a couple lids short i think yes um one so um a lot of people don't do that step anymore so what they do is they just put them on and you may not need to do it anymore. I just, if it's not broke, don't fix it type of thing. So I just still do it. Um, I'm going to eventually stop using these once I run out and actually some of them I'm reusing and I swore I would never do that. But these are like $5 a box now when they used to be two to two forty nine. So, um, Tatler, has lids that are reusable and i guess actually now they have disposable ones too but i have some of the reusable ones they do work it's a little bit of a learning curve but they since they work i'm going to you know eventually over time build up my supply and completely phase out the disposable ones 
but I'm going to reuse those as many times as I can. So since I'll let this one warm up, I'm going to go grab my, my bands and put those on top and get them in my canner. And these will process since they're pints for 35 minutes. So my lid. I'm going to need to eventually get a new water bath canner. This one, I can't even tell you how old it is. Many, many, many years old. And you need to put them in alternate sides when you put them in. Otherwise, it'll tip. So I kind of create a star pattern. So I ended up getting a little over nine pints out of those two bags of tomatoes. So not too bad. So it should get me through the rest of the winter for canned tomatoes where I won't have to buy any in the store, which sounds good to me because the price of everything has gone up so much. It's ridiculous. Um, so anyway, I have this on, cover it back up. When it comes up to a boil, I will set the timer for 35 minutes and then they'll be ready. If you like what you see, subscribe and save and you get the light in my glasses. There we go. And I hope you have a good day.